you may soon be receiving an extra stimulus check from your health insurer. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a great day. Here is your daily news report and fourth stimulus check update. In today's video, I will be covering all the latest information and news on the fourth round of stimulus payments, as well as how you could receive an extra stimulus payment. But before this video starts, I will be giving away a $75 Amazon gift card this Friday. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and comment below. Alright everyone, so according to a recent analysis, private insurance companies are expected to send out $2.1 billion in rebates to more than 10.7 million policyholders later this year. This could lead to millions of Americans receiving an extra stimulus check. For the average consumer who bought health insurance on the individual market, that means an average cash rebate of $299 in the fall. That additional money could help a lot of people that are financially struggling right now. So let's go over how these rebates will work. These rebates are coming through because a number of insurance companies that failed to meet the Affordable Care Act's medical loss ratio threshold in 2020. Insurers were required to spend at least 80% of premium revenues on health care claims or quality improvement activities. So last year, some companies fell short of their threshold as health spending. But everyone continued to pay their premiums, resulting in higher levels of profits for the insurance companies who had set their rates well before the crisis began. Now who should expect a rebate? Well, not every policyholder can expect some cash back and how much you'll get varies. The majority of the money which is $1.5 billion, will go back to about 5 million policyholders. So small and large group insurance markets are anticipated to receive $308 million and $310 million in rebates. According to a recent analysis, the final rebate numbers would be about $299 per plan member in the individual market, $127 per member in the small group market and $95 per member in the large group market. I just wanted to let you all know about this because it could help you catch up on bills, rent or household expenses. By law, insurance companies have to start issuing these rebates to eligible consumers later this fall. Now everyone, if you haven't received your $1,400 third stimulus check yet, you may be able to file a payment trace. So about 159 million stimulus payments have been sent since Congress authorized a third round of stimulus checks in March. Those payments total more than $376 billion. While millions of taxpayers already have seen the latest round of payments direct deposited into their bank accounts, there are still plenty of you who have yet to see a penny from the stimulus funds. It is really upsetting. For those of you that haven't received your third stimulus payment yet, please keep in mind that you can still try to claim the money that you are entitled to from the U.S. government. For this particular tax season, a recovery rebate credit has been added to all returns, so that people can eventually receive their overdue payments. According to the IRS website, it states that if you didn't get any payments or got less than the full amounts, you may qualify for the recovery rebate credit and must file a 2020 tax return to claim the credit even if you don't normally file. The agency advises that individuals keep the form they receive regarding their stimulus payment and refer to it when filing their tax returns. I know some of you have received a letter from the IRS stating that your stimulus check is on the way, but you still haven't received your payment money. So please make sure to keep the letter that the IRS has sent you. And how to pay for it. And uh, there are two issues. Uh, I've, I've noticed everybody's for infrastructure. <laughs> the question is who's going to pay for it? And, uh, and that's what we're going to try to work out today, at least in this bipartisan group of members of the House and Senate. And uh, I'll, a, little, uh, a little secret here, I'm going to full disclosure. I asked senators and congressmen who had either been governors or mayors because they know what it's like to make things work, to make sure that uh, you uh, get things done and uh, deal with infrastructure and uh, the needs of your community. So that's why we're here. We hopefully we'll be able to reach some kind of consensus, at least in broad terms. So 
So thank you all for coming in, and we'll be talking to you later. Mr. President, what do you think about the idea of moving forward with user fees? Over the past few weeks, my Republican colleagues and I have spent quite a bit of time making sure the American people know just how little of President Biden's two-plus trillion dollar infrastructure plan will fund actual infrastructure plans to fix roads, bridges that are so in need of repair. These are things that the Tennesseans have repeatedly told me they want to see in a bill, fix the roads, fix the bridges. What do they want to be taken out of that bill? They want to get rid of some of these provisions that have nothing to do with infrastructure, nothing. So imagine their disappointment people that are ready for a highway bill, that are ready for a transportation bill, that are ready for an infrastructure bill. Imagine their disappointment when they discovered that all the funding that they had hoped was going to go to potholes and expanding lanes on the interstate and fixing flooded back roads would instead be spent on electric cars, union advocates, and climate change ambassadors. Madam President, I know pothole repair isn't flashy, but it's what Tennesseans need. An electric car does not do you one bit of good when you're going to have to have a four by four to go pull it out of the mud every single time it rains. We're pretty practical people. And my wish would be that my colleagues across the aisle would join us in reviewing the needs of the American people, the needs of the American people, and in being practical. The lack of practicality has been a recurring problem in the months since President Biden took office. It seems that the Democrats here in Washington, D.C. can't resist the urge to throw money at social media friendly causes that not even the most talented communicators have been able to tie to the pressing needs of the American people. They did it with COVID relief, and now they're doing it with this infrastructure boondoggle, the wish list just doesn't match the PR campaign. And that's a shame because this country has its own wish list of urgently needed items